Good morning, good afternoon and good evening all. Once again, a very warm welcome on behalf of MYT. We are very much looking forward to supporting you with today's Test and Learn series discussion, Achieving Equitable and Feasible Campaign Integration through SMC and Vitamin A Collaboration. And I'm now delighted to hand over to Leah to welcome you to the session. Thank you. Good evening, good afternoon, and good morning. It is my pleasure to welcome you to today's Test and Learn session hosted by the Health Campaign Effectiveness Coalition. My name is Leah Denise Wyatt. I am the Senior Associate Health Campaign Effectiveness Coalition Director and host of today's session. Please take a moment to share which country you are joining from in the chat. And I'm just gonna pop my country in as well. Okay. And if you're, you're feeling um, super confident, you can drop your flag in the chat as well if you can find that. Okay. So for those who are new to the coalition or joining for the first time, we are the first ever partnership for cross-campaign collaboration. We foster learning and systems change and support implementation research that advances testing and replication of evidence-based health campaign practices. The coalition develops guidelines and approaches that help health campaign practitioners improve their, co their collaboration with country health systems. The Test and Learn series facilitates learning across health campaigns, fosters collaboration between health campaigns, and identifies opportunities to create systems change. The series highlights levers that have been tested in a quest to enable collaborative learning about how to improve coverage, equity, cost effectiveness, and health impact, all common areas of interest among health campaign actors. Today, we are joined by Dr. Olusola Orisanya from the Malaria Consortium. Dr. Sola has received one of 16 implementation research awards that the Health Campaign Effectiveness Program funded to inform, um, to inform what the coalition can learn about the integration of health campaign inputs, processes, and delivery mechanisms as a potential way to improve campaign effectiveness, equity, and efficiencies. I invited Dr. Sola to share what she and her team found when they investigated the effect of full integration, also referred to as co-delivery, of seasonal malaria chemo prevention with vitamin A supplementation at scale on a number of factors, including vitamin A coverage, SNC coverage, safety, equity, efficiency, and cost. In our discussion today, following Dr. Sola's presentation, we'll focus on how coordination and collaboration were achieved, how safety was taken into consideration, and how equity was measured. By the end of today's session, we will have identified actions we can take to improve campaign effectiveness and ways to work collaboratively across disease domains, something one of us and, and something each one of us can do to support change. So um, before we get started, I would like for us to get a sense of really our collective experience in co-delivery or in the co-delivery of two or more interventions. So I have um, the question is or the statement is, I have been engaged in a co-delivered campaign. True or false? Please take a moment to respond and make sure you hit that submit button. And Russell, if you can tell me if the responses are rolling in. Yes, there, we have got some responses, but just coming up to halfway. So okay. give it another 10, 20 seconds or so. All right. There's no wrong answer. Okay, let's go ahead and pull those up. Excellent. Okay, so we have a great a, a host of things to learn today um, about co-delivery. And um, as a matter of introduction, Dr. Osola Orisanya is Senior Country Technical Coordinator in Malaria in the, for the Malaria Consortium. She provides technical oversight 
for all projects and programs within the Nigerian portfolio of the Malaria Consortium with multiple funding streams, including the Global Fund, uh, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, Open Philanthropy, among others. She mentors, builds capacity, and inspires the technical team in the organization. She has extensive experience in the planning, coordination, and implementation of large-scale surveys, including malaria indicator surveys, implementation research, and other monitoring and impact evaluation surveys, having served as principal investigator and co-principal investigator for a number of them. Welcome, Dr. Sola, and I hand it over to you. Hi, everyone, and um, thank you for joining us today. I will be making a presentation titled Achieving Equitable and Feasible Campaign Integration Through SMC and Vitamin A Collaboration, and we'll be discussing the findings from Bauchi State, Nigeria. Um, so this is my outline. I will take you through uh, the background, the study objectives. I would um, let you in into some of the results and the lessons that we've learned from the project. Um, so by way of introduction, we globally, about 190 million children under the age of five are affected by vitamin A deficiency. And in Nigeria, 30%, um, um, the prevalence is 30%, and vitamin A deficiency is a major risk factor for child survival. Um, children with clinical signs of vitamin A deficiency are three to 12 times more likely to die from any childhood illness um, compared to those who are non-deficient. Um, high dose vitamin A supplementation delivered twice a year is a proven low cost intervention, which can reduce all cause mortality in children by 24%. And on this basis, it is a WHO recommendation um, that on a biannual basis, high dose vitamin A supplementation every four to six months to children who are aged um, six to 59 months at risk of vitamin A deficiency. Um, vitamin A supplementation campaigns are actually in play inefficient um, because of the poor implementation of MNCH week. Um, the Maternal Neonatal Child Health Week um, strategy. And yes, yeah, so I was talking about the gap um, in implementation of vitamin A supplementation in Nigeria. Um, in 2018, vitamin A coverage in Nigeria was just about 45% with a very wide variation across the states, ranging from 6% in some states to 86% in some states and underscoring the inequity in the coverage of vitamin A. And based on the WHO's recommendation to integrate community health interventions, um, seasonal malaria chemo prevention provides an existing and viable and also very promising platform within which vitamin A supplementation can be fully integrated to achieve higher coverage. And it was on this basis that we did a pilot in 2019 in one local government area in, in Sokoto State. Um, however, that pilot had some unanswered questions. And so this study is a follow-up on the pilot that was done in 2019. So this study was implemented in um, Bauchi State, in two local government areas in Bauchi State. Um, Giade, which is a rural local government area with a population of about 250,000 people, and Katagum, which is an urban LGA with a population of over 400,000 people. Um, this slide shows the health indices in, in, in Bauchi State and shows that vitamin A coverage in Bauchi states is about 29%, while um, the last administrative coverage of SMC that was implemented 
in Bauchi states was about 103% um, um, coverage. Um, so what was the purpose of this study? So we wanted to provide a body of evidence to support policymakers decision regarding the full integration of vitamin A and SMC campaigns at scale in diverse settings using a mixed method study design. Um, we had four object objectives. One was to design and implement in collaboration with key stakeholders um, an integrated campaign. And also the second one was to assess the feasibility um, including the effectiveness, equity, safety, and cost of um, um, an acceptability of integrating vitamin A with SMC um, amongst caregivers, um, community drug distributors, and health workers, as well as policymakers. And we also um, developed and implemented a, um, a research uptake plan and also provide, um, it was also to provide policymakers and stakeholders with a body of evidence to inform decision about integrated SMC and vitamin A supplementation in Nigeria. There were two intermediate outcomes um, for, the, for the project. One was demonstrated eye coverage of vitamin A delivered through integration with SMC campaign. And the second one was provision was the facilitation of policy decision evidence integrating vitamin A supplementation into SMC delivery platforms. Um, so the primary research question was, um, what is the effect of full um, integration of SMC with VAS at scale? Um, on vitamin A coverage, SMC coverage, safety, equity, and cost. And we also had some secondary research questions around acceptability, um, as well as the feasibility of integrating the two interventions. In terms of design, it was an implementation research study that used a convergence mixed method approach to test the integration of vitamin A supplementation with SMC program in different settings and provide information to fill knowledge gaps and also pragmatic evidence that can be used to inform um, policy adoption and subsequent scale up or expansion. Um, because it's a mixed method study, it had, it had both a qualitative and quantitative um, component. We used focus group discussions and key informants interview to collect data on, on acceptability of, of the intervention and also um, assess effectiveness, safety, and cost um, using um, baseline and endline household surveys um, before and after the distribution of um, vitamin A via the SMC platform. Um, we also had a cost analysis um, done. Um, secondary cost data was provided um, by the SMC program finance unit. And we also asserted financial and economic costs you know, of integrating um, the campaigns. Um, so this just shows the, the, the project's theory of change. Um, sorry. So just looking at all the inputs that were made into the project, um, beginning from stakeholder um, engagement, stakeholder mapping, and um, stakeholder analysis, um, up to you know, um, designing and developing um, um, an implementation strategy, co-designing that with all the key critical stakeholders, adapting tools, and training, recruitment and training of the community drug distributors, and also, you know, setting up a coordination um, platform and mechanism for overseeing the entire um, distribution process. All that, you know, resulted into outputs that then went into um, um, the intermediate outcomes that I had spoken of um, um, earlier. And we believe that these two intermediate outcome um, would then lead to increased protection of children under five with SMC and vitamin A supplementation, 
and eventually contribute to under five um, reduction in under five morbidity and mortality. So this slide shows the implementation timelines um, for the project. Um, so the, the project had um, a planning phase where we did all the engagement with the stakeholder planning, co-creating the implementation strategy with all the critical stakeholders, setting up um, an, a, a research uptake committee, and, and then using the strategy developed to inform the development of the protocol, um, receiving ethics approval, and then the implementation of the project started with a baseline assessment in September. And then, um, the intervention, um, you know, then happened between April and October 2021, beginning with all the adaptation of tools, um, in, 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 I mean, integrating um, vitamin A into the already existing SMC tools and um, field implementation tools, recruiting the, the um, field staff, training them, mobilizing the communities about the integrated campaign, and then eventually carrying out the inter integrated campaign during the third cycle of SMC implementation in 2021 in October. Um, after the inter integrated campaign in October, we then went in to do the end line household survey in November and the um, FGDs and KIs also happened in November and um, data was analyzed, reports were um, put together and we had a state level dissemination in April 2022 and later in the same month we had a national level dissemination bringing all the results um, to the stakeholders. So now the results. Um, in terms of coverage of um, SMC, we um, results from the baseline, we compared the baseline coverage with the end line coverage and vitamin A coverage increased from 1.2% at baseline without SMC integration to 82% at end line with SMC integration in both project LGAs. And we realized also that the integration did not have adversely affect the coverage of SMC campaign on its own. Um, because at baseline, um, SMC coverage um, was 92% and it was 89% at end line, although there was a slight um, um, decline in the, in the in percentage points. However, this difference was not found to be statistically significant. Um, we also compared, you know, self-reported SMC um, with SMC and, and vitamin A coverages with had confirmed coverages and the second chart there shows that for children that self-reported, um, that parent caregivers um, um, self-reported um, um, receiving um, SMC and vitamin A, it was 89 and 82% respectively. Um, and that conf confirmed by card, it was 80 and 68% um, respectively. So in terms of quality of SMC delivery, we, we tried to assess the quality of SMC delivery using um, um, delivery of the first dose of, of the SMC as a directly observed treatment. And because according to the protocol, the first dose is expected to be delivered um, as a directly observed treatment. And we wanted to check if there was any um, um, any tampering with that um, quality delivery. And so we checked um, and we found that at baseline, 70% um, of the children received their first dose as directly observed treatment. And at end line, 86% of the children received their first dose at, uh, as directly observed treatment. So we concluded that um, SMC delivery um, quality of SMC delivery was not affected by the integration. It actually, actually, it actually improved significantly um, following integration. We also looked at equity um, and 
how we measured equity was to look at the difference between the children that received the intervention and those who did not receive the intervention and to check whether there was any significant differences in those two groups based on their socioeconomic status, background characteristics. And we found that um, for children who received a vitamin A and SMC at end line, when we looked at all their background demographic characteristics, we didn't see any difference between the two groups in terms of age, sex, um, religion, um, and, and wealth index. We also looked at the um, level of education of the caregivers of those two categories of children, and there was no difference between them. However, we discovered that children living in urban areas um, were less likely to be reached with SMC uh, or vitamin A. And this was the same both for vitamin A and SMC. And the, the differences were actually um, statistically um, significant. So the other bit we looked at was the cost of implementation of um, SMC. And we found that the total cost per child um, receiving only SMC at baseline was about 94 cents, um, which is about 385, uh, 386 Naira, while the total cost for receiving um, per child receiving both vitamin A and SMC at end line was a dollar and 18 cents. And so integrating vitamin A into the usual SMC cycle introduced an additional minimal cost of just about 24 cents. Um, that's less than a hundred Naira um, per child. So what were some of the lessons that were learned um, from this um, project implementation? Um, one of the critical lessons that we learned was that early collaboration, early collaboratory, um, um, collaborative planning um, was very important. Um, and it was, you know, it helped to, um, to coordinate the activities of, for the campaign and also targeted community engagement. Um, are needed to achieve very high coverage um, of vitamin A. There was a lot of targeted um, community engagement. And then adequate supply chain management preparedness was also very important. And then we also found that the door-to-door -door distribution proved to be more effective than the, you know, the current strategy um, in achieving higher vitamin A coverage um, um, using the, the um, integrated campaign platform. Community distributors were able to reach, you know, almost every household, um, irrespective of, you know, the distance where they were, because it was a door-to-door -door, um, strategy. Other lessons learned include, you know, using existing community distributors who were selected from their communities and already trained and familiar with SMC, you know, and with adequate supervision, you know, it ensured seamless integration and integrated delivery because they were already trained on SMC. We just needed to train them on the additional intervention. They were familiar with the terrain, so the, the integration was seamless. Um, additional training on, on VAS, you know, like I've said, using pictorial algorithm also helped them to be able to, um, you know, be able to decipher the, you know, the children who were eligible for vitamin A and those who were not eligible and those who were eligible for both intervention. Um, lastly, effective monitoring and supportive supervision of field personnel also ensured compliance with integration and intervention and prompt correction of errors by supervisors, you know, using, you know, the sandwich method also boosted community distributors' confidence and ensured protocol um, adherence. So in summary, um, high dose vitamin A supplementation, you know, delivered twice annually is a proven low-cost intervention, and that is established 
to, to reduce all cause mortality in children. And integrating vitamin A supplementation and SMC improved coverage at a minimal additional cost and without lowering the quality of SMC service. Leveraging an established and acceptable platform is a viable, sustainable strategy. We also conclude that stakeholder and caregiver engagement at all levels uh, on behavioral expectation was critical to success. And integrating vitamin E and SMC is safe. This study shows that it is feasible, it is acceptable to community members and implementers and can be achieved at a minimal additional cost. Um, therefore, integrating SMC and vitamin A can strengthen the health system more for more equitable service delivery and provide a template for deploying um, other health um, interventions. I would like to acknowledge and thank um, all the team members and all our collaborators. I'd like to acknowledge Vitamin Angels. Um, they provided the vitamin A that was used in this study, and they were also part of you know, the entire team that saw to the um, success of implementation of this um, project. So thank you all for your time. Um, and over to you, Leah. Oh, thank you, Dr. Sola. So appreciated. I love how you said that this um, campaign can provide a template for other um, campaigns and other interventions. So thank you for that. Um, questions are starting to roll in for us. Um, while we um, begin to receive some of those questions, can we just, um, can you make one quick clarification um, about which research gaps specifically were identified in the first campaign in Sokoto State that this study addressed? The okay. Yeah, so, yeah. Okay. So, so one of the research gaps that was identified was about the cost of the of the integration so that initial pilot did not do any did not look at costs at all and stakeholders wanted to know what would be the additional cost you know of adding vitamin a onto an already existing smc platform the second thing was that they also wanted to see whether um, because the pilot was done in just one LGA and it was done in a semi-urban um, local government um, area. And so people were asking, if you were to do this in a rural um, area, would you be, be getting the same result? And so this study went on to answer the question about, you know, implementing that in different settings and, you know, comparing the results in those two um, different settings. Yeah, and there was also a question around equity, um, and you know that too wasn't answered in the pilot. And so this study went ahead to look at the question of F equity as well. Excellent. So there's a just one follow up question, or actually two came in about the um, the the gaps in coverage between ur urban and rural settings. <laughs> one question. Um, is, so the results from the urban settings found that the target population was not able to get equitable distribution of vitamin A. So could the challenge and what has been put in place bridge these existing gaps, gaps in coverage? What, what say you there? Um, so I heard the question around equity, and I was just going to answer that. Yes, we did find that um, there was a difference between children who received intervention and those who didn't receive in terms of where they lived. And what we found out in discussing with the stakeholders was that this was actually an inherent program pro pro problem with the SMC program. And this is something that has also been documented with the SMC program. And you know, it, it just shows that um, if you are integrating a, an intervention with another intervention um, and the platform on which you're. I just want to thank you for helping to answer some of these questions in the chat as well. Um, and while we're waiting for Dr. Solu and Ogu Chukwu, I am going to drop a couple links in the chat for you all um, that were shared with my team. These are links to the learning brief uh, that was published as a result of 
um, the study. It gives some insight into uh, what was um, about those research gaps from um, the initial study. Yes, hi, Dr. Sola. I'm just dropping a link, copy, dropping a link into yeah. the chat um, to the okay. learning brief. Okay, so I've, I've turned off my video now. Okay, great. Okay, do you want okay. to back on? All right, great. Yeah, so so I was just um, trying to wrap up on, on the initial question of, around um, equity and all that. Um, yeah, so I was saying that um, reaching children in urban area is, is, is an inherent problem with the SMC program and the group and the SMC community is working on, you know, developing strategies that, that, um, that they can use to actually reach more children who live in the urban, um, urban areas. And I was also saying that it's not just peculiar to um, SMC campaign. The same thing has been documented in LLIN campaigns as well, um, where you have, you know, um, um, where it's difficult to reach really rich people in the urban urban areas compared to um, the um, rural areas. Right. Good. And I know that um, we, I, 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 we you, as you and I were preparing for this session, we anticipated there would be questions about the cost um, of this model, of this approach. And there was a marginal increase in cost when vitamin A was added to SMC. Um, do we know about the standalone costs of delivering vitamin A only? Yes, yeah, so this study didn't um, look at the cost of delivery of vitamin A only um, because um, vitamin A delivery is usually done as part of the delivery of other interventions within the um, MNCH week. And so it will require, you know, you know, another study to do that. And so what we just did was, you know, just look at the um, the cost of delivering SMC only, and then additional cost of adding vitamin A on top of that. And that was what we did. Okay, excellent. And still on the vitamin A thread, um, given that it's meant to be delivered twice annually. Is there a plan to integrate the second mm. with another campaign? And this is assuming that it should be every six months and can't be done at SMC cycles one and four. Yeah. So yeah, we we all that we we thought about in the in the design stage. And what, what, what we agreed was that, you know, usually SMC is, I mean, vitamin A is delivered through the MNCH week. And um, the MNCH week is usually carried out as um, an outreach, um, you know, to have to reach communities and all that, but it's not done house to house, door to door. Um, so um, what we agreed um, with the stakeholders for this particular study was that, we, we could deliver um, at least one of the two doses through the SMC platform while we encourage the mothers to take their children, you know, to the health facility or the nearest health facility or, or um, um, left on the next MSTH week that, that comes up earlier in the year while the one that happens um, while later in the year, which is when SMC is implemented, that can be integrated with um, seasonal malaria chemo prevention. Okay, thank you. I'm just reading um, the questions and there's a, a, a couple um, themes here. Uh, again, we anticipated um, to come up. One is on digitization. So. Um, was the one, I guess my question is, were any aspects of um, this uh, joint uh, or co-delivered co um, campaign digitized or are there, and the specific question is, are there any plans to digitize the campaign itself? Um, and what are the challenges to ensuring that data flows into the Nigeria HMIS system for both nutrition and malaria reporting? So can you address that, um, address like the information flows and uh, really how you planned and decided which digital platforms to use? 
Okay. Yeah, so thanks, Leah. Um, for this campaign, we didn't use any digital platform um, because um, in Bauchi states, SMC is still being implemented um, um, paper as a paper-based um, campaign. And so for the study, we didn't do any um, digital implementation for the integration. However, in terms of reporting, um, one of the critical um, um, promising practices that came out from the project was that at the at the point of co-designing this integ I mean, integration, we we worked with the director, I mean the, the Department of Planning Research and Statistics, who are responsible for HMIS in the country. And um, they suggested how we should, you know, work out the reporting because currently uh, vitamin A is reported using the growth monitoring um, um, form, um, um, which is an HMIS register. Um, so what we did was that in the areas where, where, it, where the project LGA is where we're implementing the campaign, we ensured that the GMP register, um, something similar to what was you, what was the GMP, GMP register was given to um, the community drug distributors, and that was what they used to capture um, vitamin A data in the field. And so um, returning from the field, the data really actually flowed into the health facility. So in those communities where um, SMC was delivered with vitamin A, um, that report on vitamin A that was delivered went into the health facility um, data for that period. And interestingly, when we analyzed the data on DHIS the following months, we, it was very clear um, that um, the, the um, delivery of um, um, the use of those reporting tools improved reporting for vitamin A very drastically, more than 200 to 300 time, times more than what was reported um, previously. And it was obvious that um, that um, you know, integrated um, reporting um, into the national system was something that you know um, would really um, be good to to to, to take on um, should this intervention be scaled up later. Excellent. Okay, and we know yeah. that um, good information and quality reporting can feed into coordination. Um, in this case. Um, how is coordination between the different administrative units, nutrition and malaria, and Bauchi State organized? How is coordination organized to support the campaign? Can you speak to um, the successes and challenges there? And again, I know that um, there's a little, there's a bit about the senior learning brief and advocacy brief. So I'm just directing yeah. people back to that when they have a chance. Yes. Okay, great. Thanks, Leah. Yes, so we yeah, are stakeholder engagement and, you know, it was a very strong component of this project from the design stage. And, you know, it started with a stakeholder analysis and mapping and, you know, considering that the two interventions we are integrating sit in two different programs and are in different units in the Ministry of Health. Um, even both at the national and at the state level, um, it was important to, first of all, identify and map all the critical stakeholders. And then once we identified them, we engaged them um, and invited them to co-create the full integration of, of, of SMC and VAS campaign um, with us. And, you know, um, interestingly, in Bauchi State, um, malaria sits in, in an agency called Bakatma, that's the Bauchi State Agency for AIDS, Tuberculosis, and Malaria, while the nutrition vitamin A sits with the state's primary healthcare development board. And so it was critical for us to bring all those units together in, in you know, to coordinate and oversee, um, you know, the implementation of this research. So what we did was to um, um, pull um, a, 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 a research um, uptake committee together, and we pull, we, de we developed a research uptake plan because we, we didn't just want to do this as a research and a one-off research and for us to just go. We wanted it to really lead into, you know, policy decision making. And so we, we you know, set up a research uptake committee and that committee was co-chaired 
by um, the National Primary Healthcare Development Agency, as well as the National Malaria Elimination Program at the national level, and BAKATMA and the State Primary Healthcare Development Agency were members of that committee. And they sort of provided you know, oversight for the entire implementation of, of the project. When there were issues, we would go back to tea for resolution, we would agree, or oh, that committee decided on um, what was the target, uh, what, what should be the daily targets that um, the CDD should implement, um, how should the drugs move, um, who should be responsible for training, supervision, and all that. So that committee sort of like midwived the entire process of implementation. And even after the, report, the results of the study became ready, it was that same committee, you know, that handled, you know, the dissemination of, you know, the findings and, you know, you know engaging with the other policy decision makers on the results of the study. So that's that's how it worked. Of, of course, there were challenges along the way. We sometimes didn't agree. You know, sometimes you have um, one unit saying, no, this is what we want. And you know, the other one saying, no, it doesn't work that way. This is how we want it to happen. But eventually, sometimes, I mean, somehow we they were able to reach consensus and we were able to implement um, the, the project. And these decisions, these coordinated decisions, and you know, the river, um, really do um, affect uh, or have downstream um, effects. So on that, there's this a question on, um, and a first a compliment on Esther, uh, or comment saying interesting presentation. But what were the targeted community engagement approaches used? Um, and did that improve vitamin A uptake um, vis-a-vis uh, -vis SMC conducted in the past? And on that same thread, um, that's about community engagement, but also on um, the perception um, on the part of community workers. How did they perceive the interventions? Um, and did it increase their workload? Mm -hmm. Yes, thanks. Yes, those are great questions. And uh, um, because of the brevity of time, I didn't get to, you know, bring some of the results of the qualitative aspect of the study. Um, so yeah, maybe to, to just speak to that. Yes, um, we um, interviewed the community drug distributors themselves, the community health workers. We also interviewed the health workers. And yes, came across, um, some of them actually said that, um, you know, it was extra work, adding vitamin A on top of SMC. Um, they felt that, you know, the 30 minutes wait um, between um, giving vitamin, I mean, um, uh, spark and vitamin A was, you know, was too long. It, it delayed them in the field. It didn't allow them to finish up in time. And they felt that, um, yeah, something needed to be done about that. However, overall, um, the, the, the feedback overall was that it was acceptable to the caregivers. The caregivers had a perception about vitamin A um, as something that was good. They all, most of them knew that it was something that was needed for, for good hindsight. And so when it came, it, it was something that you were already familiar with. And so it wasn't an issue, you know, accepting that intervention um, at all. And so um, overall acceptability was very good. Um, and in terms of even from the health workers perspective as well, they saw it as, uh, um, uh, as feasible, um, or they made suggestions as to, you know, what could be done to improve it going forward. And I think we, we detailed all these um, very well in the, in the learning brief and the um, advocacy brief. And I would really like to refer people to get a hold of those documents and, and see the details there. Um, I don't know whether I've answered all the questions. I think there was another question about something. I can't remember, um, yeah, Leah. But I think yeah, two. maybe yeah. you can prompt me if I haven't answered any question. No, absolutely. I appreciate it. Um, and I did drop the learning brief and advocacy mm -hmm. brief in the chat. So everyone has access to those. 
um, on the Malaria Consortium website. Um, also, there's a, a question go, just kind of going back to the equity um, conversation or, or thread of um, learning there. Um, which wealth quintile data did you use and how old was that data or recent? Okay, so, so we did collect um, information on um, household items, just um, like it's usually collected in the malaria indicators. So we actually adapted um, the NDHS and the malaria indicator survey um, um, for the household um, baseline and endline um, survey. So what we did was to um, ask questions around um, household um, ownership of um, stuff, the household, um, um, the type of household, type of water that flows into the house and all that. And it was a principal component analysis that was done. And that data was collected um, in October, um, in September at baseline and November at end line. Um, and I'm just gonna close this out and ask you one more question, Dr. Sola. Um, so uh, let's see, and so and I just wanna let everyone know that we will um, continue the conversation post this se session and I'll give you some details on how we'll do that. Um, but on timing and feasibility, Dr. Sola, we have a, a few questions there. Um, what, and that is um, about the timing of the individual items, the delivery of the doses for FSM, SMC is tied to the malaria season. Um, Let's, the question is, did you have an issue with this? Um, but another one is about uh, the, the possibility of integrating additional interventions such as deworming and ITNs, would that be feasible? So given you know the timing and the calendar and, and uh, the timing and the season, seasonality of the intervention, would it be too many interventions to kind of add more on? Mm -hmm. um, so I'll just kind of leave that with you there. Hmm. Yeah, thanks, Leah. There's 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 a lot of um, um, I don't know. There's a, there's a lot of discussion around you know, especially in literature around what is enough and what is too much for a community health worker to carry. You know, um, it's it's important that we we balance um, maximizing the platform with um, not overloading, you know, the community health workers. And so, I, I wouldn't be able to answer the question to whether it would be enough or too much to add the warming. I mean, ITN, you know, vitamin A, and all those other stuff onto the SMC platform. But we we will really need to test them and be sure that you know we're not overloading the community health workers and whatever it is we're doing is feasible to add those additional um, interventions um, some people have asked that you know um, community health workers can do more um, and depending on what the scope of work that they are currently already doing is and you know the platform through which they deliver um, the work that they do. But it's also very important to note that most of the times these community health workers are volunteers and they also have families to take care of and all that. So it's important that um, whatever we, we add on to the platform that they're already working on, these other concentrations should be put in, into, into you know, perspective as well. So that um, as much as we are trying to maximize you know, the outputs from those um, um, intervention platforms, we're not putting, you know, the community health workers themselves at risk, um, and also we're not jeopardizing their well-being as well. I think that's a good... Um, so maybe let me just also speak to the issue of timing. Yeah. Um, sorry, Le, can I speak to the issue of timing uh, about malaria season and whether this had any issue? No, we didn't have any issue. As a matter of fact, um, going by the timing of the um, um, delivery of vitamin A through the MNCH week, 
it ties very well. The second round of MSH week in the year happens around October, November. And that timing ties very well with the timing for SMC. And so it's it just, I mean, it, it just goes to show that, you know, if there is a platform that can take the intervention house to house, then there is no need, you know, no point putting the intervention in, in on the platform that, you know, we just will not be able to reach every child that is eligible. Thank you, and I think that's a great um, note to kind of close this discussion on. I will say um, that we covered a lot of ground today, Dr. Sola, and I appreciate you accepting the invitation to join us today. I'm just gonna pop on my camera um, as we close out. Are there any last words you may have for us? Unfortunately, we do seem to be having a bit of technical difficulty there, Leah with the Dr. Sola's sound, it doesn't seem to be okay. coming through. <laughs> okay, well, let's go on to the poll um, and we'll circle back when we can. Um, can you tell me, everyone that is with us, um, whether or not you learned something new today about co-deliver campaigns and, and campaign inter integration? Did you learn anything new? I'm just going to submit my answer too. And Russell, let me know how we are on response on our response rate. Yeah, we've just hit half halfway. Okay. So we're still coming in. I'll give you five more seconds. Three, two, one. Let's go ahead and post those and roll over great to the second one. The second question, would you like to learn uh, what about, or what would you like to learn about campaign effectiveness in the future? Well, this helps us in our planning. So I also put a question, um, answered that poll question as well. Um, so I have things I want to learn about and I'll just give us Five more seconds to answer that question. Okay, Russell, if you can go ahead and post those. Thank you. Okay, all right, thank you. And um, just in closing, it's my hope that we take a moment to share what we learned today with our network. And in the process, I encourage all of us to create new knowledge in our organizations and within this coalition. Um, to continue this conversation, you can join us on the Health Campaign Effectiveness Coalition LinkedIn page to continue the conversation. I'll just drop that link in the chat for us here. I'll do a quick copy and paste. Send that to everyone. All right, so that's the post for today where we can continue the conversation. Dr. Sola um, has a, agreed to uh, monitor that post for questions. Um, you can also drop a private email to uh, the coalition at campaigneffectiveness.org by scrolling down to the bottom of that homepage and um, clicking on contact us. So thank you um, everyone for joining today. I appreciate your time um, and glad you accepted the invitation to be with us. Have a great rest of your day or your evening and stay safe. Take care.